السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفبهذا الحديث أنتم مدهنون وتجعلون رزقكم أنكم تكذبون فلولا إذا بلغت الحلقوم وأنتم حينئذ تنظرون ونحن أقرب إليه منكم ولكن لا تبصرون فلولا إن كنتم تم غير مدينين ترجعونها إن كنتم صادقين صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى in Quran al-Kareem informed us of everything related to our life anything a human being would need there are instructions about it in Quran and explanations of it in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we try to make an index of the Quran with all the subjects covered in this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's something impossible for us to do. But generally, if you try to put all the messages of Quran in few categories, Mufassirin after working very hard told us that we can divide the whole thing in three categories. One third of Quran is about ahkam, rules of the sharia, do's and don'ts, things that are good or they are not good for us to do. So one third of Qur'an is related to ahkam. Another third of Qur'an al kareem the second third of it, the stories of the previous ummas and things that have happened in the past so that we can learn our lessons from it. And we learn about the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how He deals with human beings. That is called Sunnatullah. The rule of Allah in regarding dealings with human beings. If human beings would do these type of deeds, these type of actions, how they would be treated, what they would get in return. If someone would do this, what would he get for it? Good and bad, both are mentioned in those stories of the previous nations. And of course, all of us know some of these stories from Quran al kareem like the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that is mentioned in many different places of Quran with Fir'aun, and then with Qarun, and then with Bani Israel. Then all the other Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, there are about 25 Anbiya that are mentioned in Quran al kareem And there are some, men, uh, some uh, nations mentioned in Quran without relating their religion or a prophet that was at their time. It's only mentioning certain deeds of those nations so that, and the reaction to those deeds so that we can get our lessons from it. So another third of Quran is the stories of the previous nations. The third portion of Quran is about Akhirah. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of what will happen from the time that we will leave this world. And then 
of course, no one is coming back. So, once we leave, where are we heading to? What we would be doing there? What we have to go through? Every situation, every step a person would take from here until his final destination. And then what will happen in that final destination? What is it that we would get over there? All of those details are mentioned there. So past and then present, ahkam, for us, and then our future. All three are mentioned in Qur'an, and you can say almost each of them takes one-third of Qur'an. Past has one-third, and then present of ahkam is one-third, and future is almost one-third of Qur'an. Most of the time, we study few things about halal and haram. But as far as what will happen to us from the time that we are ready to leave, and then onward, as we keep on going further and time passes, what will happen to us, what is it that we have to go through in the next world, is something that most of the time people don't even study. And of course, not knowing about it keep us careless of our future. That is our real future. We normally see that every parents are worried about their children's future. What will happen to my children? And depending on the parents, way of thinking, some of them they worry, in fact most of them they would worry about their dunya, how they are going to earn, what, how they are going to make their living, and how much they would earn, and what type of lifestyle they would have. Most of the parents worry about the future of their children related to dunya. There may be very few that are worrying about their children's akhirah. Our akhirah is the real future. This dunya is a very temporary time that we are spending a very short time over here and soon we all will depart. And regardless of the time that we will be spending in this dunya, 20 years, 30 years, more than what we have at this time, at the end this would seem like hours or even less than hours. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al kareem on the day of judgment people will be discussing with each other. قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ سِنِينَ How many years did we live over there? قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ And the response would be that we have lived over there for a day or less than a day. And of course, in reality, when you compare the day of the Akhirah, كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةً The day of judgment equals to 50,000 years of this life. So compare our 60, 70 years of life with 50,000 years of that day. And that's very true that we have lived a very small portion of a day. Not only this, have we ever asked our, ourselves this question, where are we going to live more, above the ground or under the ground? For sure, every person would live above the ground and under the ground more than he lives above the ground. The time that we are going to spend under the ground is much longer much longer than the time that we are spending on this ground. And not to talk about Akhirah, about time after resurrection. Just the time that we will be spending in this world, under the ground, is much longer than the time that we are spending on the ground. 
Imagine, with all the preparations that we are making for our living in this world, on this ground, all the means of comfort that we have, all the means of luxury that we have, and everything that we are trying to acquire for ourselves to have the best life, and becomes very difficult to live without even one of these things. We have house, we have everything, alhamdulillah, we have the food, we have the fridge full of it, but in winter, if there is no heating in the house, it becomes impossible for us to live in that house. In summer, we don't have fans or we don't have air conditioning in the house, it becomes very difficult for us. We have air conditioning, we have the heating, we have all other means of life. And someday we open the fridge and we don't find ice in the fridge, becomes very difficult for us. Oh, today we don't have ice. It looks like we are very poor, we are out of our needs, we, can, we, we don't even have enough to fulfill our needs. And it's only that we don't have ice, everything else is there. Millions of blessings. Imagine when we are placed under the ground. Where we have nothing with us. We did not take anything with us. Not even our clothing. At a time when the person is being placed in the grave. Recognizes and realizes that everything is gone out of my hand. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ الْمَيِّتَ إِذَا وُضِعَ فِي قَبْرِهِ وَتَوَلَّى عَنْهُ أَصْحَابُهُ When a person is placed in his grave, and all of his people are leaving him, إِنَّهُ لَيَسْمَعُ قَرْعَنِ عَالِهِمْ That mayyit, this person, hears the first steps of people leaving him and going away. And at that time, the person feels like shouting at his people, Why are you leaving me alone over here? Come help me, I need your support, I need your help. Can there be a single person who is willing to come and be with me for some time? But no one wants to go back. No one wants to go to this person. People will put us in our grave, and they will leave, and right there, our a'mal will be presented to us, and malaika will come to question us. Everyone would leave, regardless of how loved we are by people and how much people, how, uh, how, how many of those loved ones are claiming our love, they will not be willing to come with us. Parents, children, spouses, brothers, sisters, no one would come to us with us in our grave. That's it. That's the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are locked in a small room for some time, and no one comes around us, we don't find people to talk to. What will happen to us? Forget about locked in a small room. Nowadays, in fact, if one day we forget our cell phone at home, you just forgot your cell phone, and you are free, alhamdulillah, walking around, you can go anywhere, you can go to a payphone or talk, and you can, you are driving your car, you are almost to your, getting to your destination, but how disturbed this person would be that I don't have my phone with me today. Older people will have only one worry. That I can't call any youngsters will have two worries. That I can't, I'm not even getting the text messages. Imagine when a person is being placed in his grave. إِنَّهُ لَيَسْمَعُ قَرْعَنِ عَالِهِمْ here is the first steps of people walking away from him. Leaving him under the ground with his amal and going away. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran. That we need to prepare ourselves for that day. فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ What will happen the time when your ruh is in your throat? Is going out. Is still the person is alive. The ruh is on the throat. And the person feels it. My ruh is going out. And at this time, this person will be looking at his ruh, leaving the body. And everyone else is watching this person dying. 
No one can save him from dying. Parents are there. They can't save him. Children are there with their parents. They can't save him. وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذَنْ تَنْظُرُونَ Everyone is watching this person dying. And no one can help this person. That's it. The time came, no one can do anything for this person. And now this person opens his eyes. The ruh is leaving the body. He sees the children are standing there. Wife is standing there. Parents are there. Wants to talk to them. The tongue does not have the power to move and say anything. That power is gone. He's looking at them. Tears are coming of this person's eyes. That I want to say one last word to my children. One last word to my wife. But the time is gone. Still the person is alive. He can't say his word. He's just looking. The person is just looking. The eyes are open. We have the chance at this time to say those last words that we want to say. If we get the opportunity of saying something at that time, what is it that we would tell our children and our families? What message are we going to give it to them? Of course, at this time, the person sees the malaika. He sees the angels. He knows he's departing. Now he's worried is about his akhirah. He sees that reality. And wants to say something that please, I'm going towards a lot of hardships over there. I see my deeds with me. Please do something for me to save me from that adab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran at that moment, the person will be requesting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَنفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Spend out of what you have. What we have given you before the death would come, and then at that time the person will say, "Fayakula Rabbi, laula akhartani ila ajalin qarib, fa sadda wa akum min al-salihin." He will say, "Ya Allah, why don't you give me a little time so I can give some charity and do some good deed?" Al sadda wa akum min al-salihin. Two things this person wants to do now. Rabbul Alameen is telling us the fact of our life, something that we all will go through. If we really would be saying this at the time, and we know we all would be saying it for sure, then why not do it at this time? That let us do whatever we can for ourselves, so that we can prepare for that day when we are departing this world. Fa give some sadaqah, and be of salihin, be of good people, do the good deeds. The time when the person is dying, when the malaika would approach this person, when the ruh is departing the body, at this time, where this person was heading to? Where was he going to? What was his plan? Today I won't be able to perform Zuhr and Asr prayer because I have a busy schedule. I couldn't get up for Salat al-Fajr because I was very tired last night. He has a lot of papers in his pocket. He has money in his pocket. Where is it from? Halal or haram? He has a lot of cards in his pocket. All the money that is in that account, is it from halal or haram? At this time he was heading to where? Some time ago, it was in our own town. A young person, I never knew that family, but I just read it in the news. That a young person was in a party where they were doing all kind of nonsense. And finally, something happened in that party and a person started shooting everyone and this one of these people who was supposed to be Muslim, he was also killed in that party, a young man. Dancing, drinking, and all the other things that are going on over there. And the person, this was this last person, uh, this person's last amal, this is how he faced Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
while drinking and dancing and being with all these girls. No one knows when the time would come. No one knows what the person would be doing. We think, I'll just do it now. And then I would stop later on. Who knows when the person would leave while we are heading to that direction. If the death will come, what are we going to do then? This is the last time, but who knows, it will be, it will, if we can even do it for the last time or not, or while we are heading there, the malaika of death would come. I'm saying, that's, this is your time to go. Who has the guarantee of how much are we going to live? How long are we going to live? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam therefore chose us in a hadith, which is in Sunan al-Tirmizi, Ibn Majah, and Musnad Ahmad, narrated on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذِمِ الْلَذَّاتِ Keep on remembering the ten thing that will destroy your desires. If we are living a life of desires, if desires are just growing up in there, if you are having a lot of weed in your background, we need to kill it. We need to kill those weeds. Just cutting it by a lawn mover will not be enough. It will keep on growing again and again. Do something to kill all the weed that is growing and destroying all the grass out there. And for sure, we would not want this weed in our yard. How can we accept all of this weed in our heart that is destroying our iman and our amal? And these are the desires. Living life of just desires, trying to fulfill desires, day and night, nothing but desires. I want to work, I want to earn more, I want to make more and more and more. What will happen to this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if I would leave the world now, what will happen to me and how I'm going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? For how long are we going to keep on delaying it? Every person feels the same way. People in their 20s, they think, okay, I have a lot of time. 40s, they still have a lot of time. Subhanallah, when people get in their 70s, they still feel they have a lot of time. As those people that are at that age. And what shaitan does is, at that age you would say, you know, you didn't do anything when you were young and when you had this strength, and what, what can you do now? And that person is totally hopeless now. He doesn't want to do anything. Can we really find a person who is in 70s or even in his 80s now? A person got in his 80s and now he says, you know, I have a million dollars sitting in my account. When am I going to use them? Okay, let me give them out as a sadaqah. No, this person needs another million. Even at that age, he wants it. Believe me, these desires when they grow, this is just like the weed when it's growing. You kill it while it's still small, you can kill it. Once it gets stronger, imagine that weed is getting stronger, it will become a tree. And you are getting weaker every day. So in your 70s, you think you are going to fight a tree in your yard? And you couldn't find it in your 40s, when that was only a small weed? This is exactly what happens. These desires, when they grow into the heart, they get very strong after some time and... Old age, we are very weak. You want to do sayda, you can't do it. You have to sit on the chair. You can't even do a sayda. What else? How are we going to break this tree now? The person cannot fast. He cannot pray properly. He cannot do anything else. How are we going to fight those weeds and those trees that, we, that are grown in our yard? Just imagine physically if we have to take out a tree in that age. It is a big mistake to delay it until that age. We have to deal with it at this time. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذِمِ الْلَذَّاتِ Always remember the thing that will destroy the desires. It will kill the desires. Do we really need desires? We don't need them. Let them die. So I can do something right with my life. أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذِمِ الْلَذَّاتِ Always remember the thing that will destroy these desires in the heart, al-maut, and that is death. 
At a time when a person is heading towards a sin, just remind himself that what if I would die now? No. That thought is enough to make the person take a U-turn and go back, no, I don't want to do it. I can't afford to do it. What if I would die right now? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to prepare for our akhirah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to always be ready to face Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, in our next sessions, we will talk about the ayahs that would remind us how are we going to meet Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is it that we go through at the time when we are departing this world and heading towards the next world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep all of us on Salat al Mustaqim and may Allah be pleased with all of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ir al Muslimina wa al Muslimat wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.